The focus of this is really going to be on uh, Logstash and looking specifically at how we can uh, use Logstash to automatically ingest data that we have. Uh, so, you know, an example would be if you're working at a company and, you know, you're given a CSV uh, output every so often, um, as you just drag and drop that CSV into a folder and Logstash will handle the actual copying of that data and putting it into an Elasticsearch index for you. So that's what makes Logstash really powerful. And that's kind of the focus for me uh, in this video. So um, with all that, out of the way, um, we'll get started. I do have a README so you guys can follow along too through that. Um, but basically, um, to get started, all you do is um, the first thing you're going to want to command uh, run is the command um, docker network create elk stack. And I've already made that. Um, but uh, if this is the first time, obviously you do that. Also, you want to make sure you have Docker installed on your local machine. Um, the purpose of creating this Docker network is so that we can have the three containers that are going to be running um, able to talk to each other. So we're going to have one container for Elasticsearch, another one for Kibana, and then finally one for Logstash. And uh, each container is going to have a different port binding and other stuff like that. Um, and so if you wanted to view the specifics of that, uh, this is in the Docker Compose YAML file. So you can see that we've got that Elasticsearch container. Um, and we're pulling the public elastic image uh, and we're doing the same thing for Logstash and Kibana. Um, a really important thing to note uh, to get this thing working is that uh, when you're binding the volumes for your Logstash uh, service or container, um, you need to make sure that, you know, in our case, I have a directory in my project called sample data and sample data will be where I am putting those CSVs. Um, and so I want to make sure that that, you know, whatever is in here, uh, is going to be at this path inside of the Logstash container because Logstash is going to need to be able to access it to actually ingest it for Elastic. So if you don't do this, um, or you know, if you have a different local file path on your machine, um, that can be causing issues when you're wondering why you know your CSVs aren't being ingested the way you expect them to be. Um, but you know, after you clone this repo, um, it's pretty straightforward. You've made your Docker network, and we're just going to run that command Docker compose up. Um, I intentionally don't use the dash D because I want to be able to see the logs as they come in. Um, and so, you know, in our case right now, we're spinning up Elasticsearch first. Uh, and you can see that the other two containers depend on Elasticsearch. So Kibana and Logstash can't do anything until the Elasticsearch container is running inside of that uh, network that we created. Um, and so with all of this stuff made, um, Gonna give this thing a moment and on your machine um, this may take some time because you might need to download the images uh, if you're doing this for the first time but um, once it's all up and running um, you should be able to go to localhost port 5601 and so in my case uh, it's still not there yet so i'm just going to uh, wait and come back for when this thing's up and running now that this thing is running, if you open up a web browser and we go to localhost port 5601, um, you can see it's now loading up Kibana. And um, so in our case, Logstash cannot ingest data until you've created a index and an index schema or mapping for it. So basically uh, the very first thing you need to do is you need to click on the little three uh, icons and then you go to DevTools. And so in here, I've already run these commands um, and I'll post them, they're in the readme. Uh, but basically, the very first thing you need to do is uh, run this command here, which is going to create a new index inside of Elasticsearch called demo index. And you're also gonna be defining the mapping. Um, it's equivalent to like a schema in SQL. Um, and you're basically telling Elasticsearch, you know, inside of demo index, we're gonna have a field for timestamp, log level, and message. Um, again, this is going to be specific to whatever CSV data that you're going to be getting. Um, but in our case, uh, you know, we're just defining that. So I'm going to run this command here um, to acknowledge that our demo index has been successfully created. And we're also going to uh, run this command um, to actually uh, see that. And I just want to make sure you guys can see that. So running this command, get demo index. Uh, search is just going to tell us right now that you know as of right now there's no documents inside of this index um, and so if i go back to vs code here um, you can see that we have uh, sample data right here and um, so inside of this directory uh, i've got this uh, you know csv 
and to get log stash to check it, I'm just gonna add a new empty line, save it. Um, and you can see that now log stash has recognized that there's a difference inside of that directory. Um, so log stash is going to attempt to uh, index whatever uh, you know CSV can find there. And it obviously our CSV has those three fields that we just talked about, and we've already told it what the data types are. Um, so if I go back to here and we rerun our search, you can see that um, it is uh, gradually making its way through. Um, right now it's only seeing one record, but uh, you know, as we go forward, so if I were to make a new uh, sample 2.csv file right here, um, and then I have some demo data for that. So if I come in here and I paste this in, and I save it. Um, you can again see that now Logstash has realized that there's something else uh, inside of uh, our CSV. Um, and these error messages that you're seeing, um, so this one is complaining because on line one, it's trying to look at the string called timestamp and parse that as a datetime object like it would on lines two through seven, and it can't do that because timestamp is a string, not an actual date. Um, so, you know, it's okay to, to see those errors, but if you go back to Elasticsearch and we run this again, you can see that um, it, we are able to see those new documents that just came in. So I didn't have to do any kind of manual data ingestion to make that work. Um, and this is this thing that uh, took me a long time to figure out, which is why I'm sharing with you guys. Um, but you can see that uh, now uh, we successfully have this thing up and running where, um, and it even tells you where it came from, but all the additional stuff uh, just went straight into our index without us having to do any manual intervention. That's because the log stash service is working on this machine, which is pretty awesome. So um, that is the thing that uh, honestly took a very, very long time to figure out. Um, we're just gonna do one more here because I think it's fun to see log stash in action. Um, so if I go here, and we're gonna go back to VS Code, and I'll make another file, and we'll call this you know, sample3.csv, uh, and I'm just going to paste that right there, and then save it. Uh, so now sample3.csv is gonna trigger, so the fact that we just added a new CSV to that sample data directory is gonna make Logstash uh, re-index it. Um, and so if we go back to here in Chrome, and I just rerun this guy again, you can see that we now have 11 documents inside of our demo index. Um, and so it's pulling from now sample3.csv2. So, you know, you can just have people now dump CSVs or JSONs, whatever in data types that uh, Logstash accepts into that directory and it'll automatically ingest them. Um, final notes I'll make here is uh, it's very, very important to get your Logstash config set up correctly. So this path right here, um, user share log stash sample data is inside of that Docker container. And so inside of Docker Compose, um, when we were doing that volume binding, we needed to make sure that that uh, is a, a valid path and that we are uh, correctly mapping that or binding it to you know, that sample data on our local machine. So that's the whole reason why this is working. Um, you know, and in, in addition to that, um, you, know, it, you might struggle a lot to get the columns to work and stuff. So like it might be easier to just manually define um, what your columns are if you already know what your CSVs look like uh, and tell it, you know, to do any conversions or stuff. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of trial and error to get it to work right. But, you know, if you clone this repo, uh, this sample data should work so you guys can, you know, fork it and do whatever you want with, uh, for your own purposes. But um, yeah, so very, very important to get that log stash config. Uh, nice and also this output um, field uh, is telling it you know in our case we're, we want to put this in demo index if I wanted to call it a different index obviously that's where you'd give it a different name you're also telling it that it can find the Elasticsearch service at port 9200 um, so you know just a lot of log stash config stuff that uh, you want to make sure is absolutely right otherwise you won't see any documents so um, I'm gonna wrap things up with that hope this is helpful stuff